All right, YouTube, we back with another one, man. For all my Glock haters, man, if y'all watching this video, y'all might as well just cut it off now, because that's what we're going to be talking about. Yep, another Glock. Probably one of the best Glocks ever produced. Damn near one of the most popular ones carried, even in today's world, with all the other options you got out there, the so-called better guns or Glock killers, if that's what you want to call it. Um, The Glock 19, man, yeah. So I'm gonna make this video pretty much very simple, very easy. This is an unboxing. This is not my firearm. Um, I'm actually babysitting this firearm for my brother. Um, he wanted me to take it off his hands for a little bit. Um, kind of getting some stuff together. So I said, listen, I already had the SKS in my possession for some time and the bullpup. So I wouldn't mind babysitting this one right here. So I figure why I'm at it. Might as well go ahead and do a quick um, overlook on it and kind of just talk about pretty much the, the whole thing of um, Glocks, man. Especially this one, being as though this is not a Gen 5. If you see, it does not have the front serrations. It has that boxy look. doesn't have like that more curved slide, kind of like the, um, and also the finish. The Glocks have that, that newer, nicer, kind of like a darker black finish. As you see, this one is more like grayed out. So, and it doesn't say Gen 5 or Gen 4 on it. So yes, if you were wondering, this is a Gen 3. Um, Still relevant to me though, man. I mean, I like them. I think the Glocks are great. Um, If you know by now, you wanna call it a Glock fanboy. I just like Glocks. I don't think it's an issue with that, but apparently in today's world, it is. If you like Glocks, then pretty much people label you the same way they label anyone else who likes Glocks and we all different man you know y'all want to argue that you know two and three thousand dollar guns are better that's fine by me but I find it ridiculous to even see the, the matter of comparing a Glock to something that expensive just shows you how important Glock is that it gets compared to almost any other gun and somehow some way this always ends up ends up coming out on top so in my opinion, yes, I still think in 2024, even a Gen 3 is relevant to carry because it works. It's got a footprint, it's got a trail, you know, for reliability, it's got history, you know? So at the end of the day, you know, these have been around for a while. Um, they're gonna work, they're gonna work every time you pull the trigger, you know? That's what you want at the end of the day. All the fancy features, yes, it's not optic cut, you know, <clears throat> could put a light on here. Um, I think my brother carries his gun. He doesn't carry with any attachments. He has a threaded barrel for it with a comp that he had, but he didn't like the way it looked, so he took it off. Um, I actually shot this at the range with him a few times, and it's a very good shooter. I mean, I shot the Gen 5 Glock 19. Um, I don't remember it being much of a difference in this. I mean, as you guys know, I prefer the 19X because I like the full-size grip. But to be honest, this is a great shooter. Um, even with, I shot it with and without the comp. I mean, it shoots great both ways. And you two, before y'all start acting up, man, I know these new rules and regulations has been in place, have been goofy lately. So just so y'all know, man, look, I'm empty. There's nothing in this mag. I'm gonna zoom in for y'all, just so y'all see. Shout out to my boy, uh, Stormtrooper Accuracy, man. Clear, 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 clear. <laughs> Gotta do it the way he does, sort of, because apparently that's what you have to do now, man. You. Clearly show the guns clear and people are still questioning you. So yes, as you can see right there, nothing in the mag, man. We're gonna point them in a safe direction, pull that trigger, boom, we done, there you have it. So no, there's no live ammunition anywhere, not even in this room that I'm filming in. So don't ask, <laughs> you two, we in a safe and controlled environment, man, so don't trip. But yeah, like I was saying, man, I basically made this video for y'all. Yes, it's just another Glock video. And like I said, it's not an unboxing, just an overlook on it. And kind of just wondering, you know, your guys' opinion, you know, do you guys think that this is still relevant in 2024? And like I said, my answer to y'all, for me, my personal opinion, yes, it's still definitely relevant because a lot of these new guns that are coming out are plagued with problems, man. You know, infections, if you want to call it a tet, you know, a lot of recall issues, um, you know, guns going off on themselves, you know, no pun intended, but you see what SIG is going through right now. And you know, a lot of you guys praise SIG. I don't have an issue with SIG. I actually am a really big fan of the P365. I actually like the X Macro, probably my favorite SIG if you ask me. Um, eventually, I'm probably gonna get around to getting one. I'm not a SIG hater, but
but I do feel like that company gets a lot of um a lot of praise over Glock when it's plagued with a lot more problems than Glock probably ever had. Um are Glocks perfect? No. I mean I've had a Glock jam on me before. Um I mean I will I will consider it more as a limp wrist, but it's still a jam all in all, you know, fairly little feed. But um you know, as far as having like real malfunctions, no, I've never had any real malfunctions with a Glock, you know, especially not like a nine millimeter Glock, like a Glock 19. My 19X has over 2,500 rounds. Um, I'm probably pushing that number a little lower. I'm a little bit closer to the 3000 mark now, give or take. Um, I've ran every type of different ammo through it. And if you haven't seen my Glock 19X review, go check it out, man. Cause I give you all a real raw uncut. I'm not sugarcoating anything on my videos. Um, I'm not paid for advertisements or anything like that. So anything that I say is strictly my opinion, man. So like I said, you know, I fired all types of different ammo, steel case, aluminum, brass, whatever you want to call it, hollow points. Um, never failed me, you know. So yeah, I tend to praise Glock a little bit because that's pretty much like my favorite go-to gun. I've had other guns, in case you guys are wondering. Um, I just always resort back to a Glock. Um, a Glock wasn't my first gun, but like I said, you know, I've had I've had Glocks already for a few years now. I've been shooting them for a few years and kind of got around to liking them when I seen how reliable they are and how simple they are, you know. Everybody don't need an optic cut. Everybody doesn't need a flashlight. Um, although I do, I am kind of like a flashlight nut lately. Um, pretty much all my guns have flashlight attachments on them just because I do a lot of things in the night and, you know, also for bedside gun purposes, it's, it's always good to have one, but is it needed on the EDC? Probably not, you know? So a lot of arguments over Glock is, oh, well, you know, this gun comes optic ready or this gun comes ported or this gun comes with a flat face trigger that's two pounds. A lot of people don't really need that because in a real life situation, that's not really gonna matter when you're under panic. You're not gonna know if that trigger, the difference between that two and a half pound trigger opposed to like a five pound clock trigger, you're not gonna notice the difference if you're under pressure. So that's why a lot of times I don't get crazy over updates, you know. I got the uh, dagger here with, with me. The video's not about the dagger, but you guys know this is a Glock clone. Just to show you that I pretty much did a few upgrades on this, but even with this gun, I didn't even touch the trigger. I don't feel like the trigger's horrible. And I'm just comparing it to the Glock trigger because no, they're not the same, but they do have that same sponginess that you guys complain about. And like I said, when you're under pressure, man, that spongy trigger is not going to matter because you're still going to go to pull it. If you got to defend yourself, you're not going to worry about if the gun has a two and a half pound trigger or a six or seven pound trigger for that matter. So the arguments for me are irrelevant on when people try to compare a gun being better than Glock. You know, same with the dagger. For me, this is probably one of the best Glock clones you could get on the market. YouTube, once again, we're empty. You see that? There's nothing in the mag. There's nothing in there. As you can see, the chamber is empty. There's nothing in the pipe. Save direction, pull the trigger. We lock back in, y'all. So like I was saying, I did a few updates with the dagger because yeah, if there's one thing that I don't like on the Gen 3, it's the mag uh, release. I'm not a big fan of that. It's very hard to push, at least for me. Um, you, I mean, after a while you can manipulate it, but for me, I just don't have the patience for that. So I just went and upgraded the, um, I went and upgraded the mag release. And as you can see, I got the extended mag well, extended um, mag plus five optic light, you know, but this is my personal gun. Do I carry it? No. Um, do I plan on carry, carrying it? Yes, eventually. I've got about 600 rounds through this dagger. It's not a Glock, obviously it's a Glock clone, but it's just as reliable if anybody wants if, if we're speaking on just a dagger, the micro, obviously I had some issues with that. But as far as this one has been flawless, I ran about 600 rounds, like I said, all types of different ammo. And it just goes to show you that Glock footprint works every time because this is a clone directly taken from the Gen 3, which as you can see, if you if you don't know, if you wouldn't know that this was a um, dagger, you would never know that it was a PSA dagger. You know, if you're not too big on the guns and you're looking at these two guns side by side, they look exactly the same aside from the attachments and the color differences. But like I said, man, the arguments are kind of irrelevant because it's always about, oh, well, you know, this gun comes optic ready. Well, this gun comes optic ready. 
And this is a $300 gun opposed to a five $600 Glock that you won't get optics ready with. You know, yeah, you'll get the rail on it, but with the dagger, you can throw all the attachments on it and still have a fully built gun attachments and everything still under, well under 600 bucks. So what'll be your argument for this one? Because the argument for this is, oh, well, you know, it doesn't come optic ready or, you know, Glock never changes anything. Well, as you can see here, PSA gives you the full deal. Suppressor sights, you got the open slide cuts right here with the gator mouth, probably one of my favorite designs ever on a slide. I think they really hit it out the park with this. Got the nice deep serrations. So you can press check from the back, from the rear, make it real easy. Obviously the Gen 3s didn't come with front serrations. That's only on the Gen 5s. So, you know, just a few little differences The PS PSA upgraded. Obviously, you know, this is the big daddy OG. So this will always come out on top but you can't knock companies for cloning Glock. I just think the PSA did it better than a lot of other companies um, that are way overpriced in my opinion, <coughs> Shadow Systems. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I never shot at Shadow Systems. They look really nice, all pimped out or whatever. But like I said, in a real life situation, none of that stuff's gonna matter. And if we being real, I'm gonna buy the $300 gun that's just as reliable as a Shadow System, which is a, six seven eight nine hundred dollars sometimes even up in the thousands i've seen them guns going for and at the end of the day it's just a clock clone so you're telling me i can get this put all these attachments on and make it look just as nice if not better for under the price of a regular glock so once again like i'm saying you know the arguments are stupid they're irrelevant a lot of times people you know you guys just kind of get into this bandwagon on youtube and start hating on glock and it's like yeah i get it it's not the only gun out there but you shouldn't knock anybody for liking what they like. If a person wants an HK, they're gonna get an HK. If they want a Beretta, they're gonna get a Beretta. If they want an FN, they're gonna get an FN. Me personally, I like all guns. I'm a fan of all of those makes that I just mentioned, all those companies, you know? But do I own any? Not at the moment. I mean, maybe in the future I will. I'm not saying the Glock is the only gun that I'm gonna have, but I actually really like Glock. I just think it works for me. I don't need all that fancy stuff, you know, aluminum, metal frame, polymer is good for me. You know, like I said, would I love to own one? Yeah, but a lot of these guns are expensive, you know? I love the new Canon TTI. I just don't see, you know, me paying $1,000 for it, you know? Would I ever own a $1,000 gun? I mean, I have, I've had a Canon, you know, that, that I paid well over, you know, $800 for, close damn near after taxes was all said and done it was about a thousand dollars and that was my biggest regret because i ended up not liking the gun and since then i made a pact to myself that i ain't gonna buy nothing expensive just because it looks nice you know i gotta try it out first i gotta shoot it first i gotta see if i like it i gotta see if it's reliable see if it works for me and at the end of the day like i said brings you right back around the corner glock just works for me and it's not the cheapest gun on the market but if you want to go a little bit cheaper, a little bit more budget friendly, then get yourself a dagger. Now, like I said, the micro, I've had problems with it. I've seen people that don't have issues with it at all. I guess it just depends on everybody's purchase. Everybody's purchase is different. It might might have gotten a different batch, but the compact dagger, the full size OG dagger, they have a better footprint because they've been around longer. So I think they've been able to work out the tweaks. I haven't had any issues with mine, like I said. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more on the friendly, price friendly side, I would say go with a dagger. But otherwise, you know, you can't go wrong with a Glock, even if, it's, even if it is a Gen 3. You know, don't let nobody tell you different just because it's not optic cut. Yeah, it's a big, heavy block, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's a brick. I've heard people mention Glocks and referring to it as bricks. It's funny. I love it. <laughs> I don't really care. I actually laugh at stuff like that, man, because for me... You can laugh at these bricks all you want, but they work, you know? If you throw them, they're gonna work. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I don't wanna make this video too much longer, y'all. I just wanted to give my opinion on that. Let me know in the comments, man, what you think. Do you like Glock? Do you think a Gen 3 is still relevant? And also, you know, would you consider getting a Gen 3 in 2024? I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but a lot of people do hate on Glock. And honestly, I would love to get a Gen 3. Um, I wouldn't mind it because a lot of times people say the older stuff works better anyway. So this is a Gen 3 clone. Another thing you can do if you have a Glock and you own a dagger and you own a Gen 3 Glock, um, you can interchange the parts. So 
you know, you can change the slide out. You can literally interchange both parts onto the opposite gun, which I think is amazing because, you know, if you need spare parts from this or from this, vice versa, if something breaks on either one, you can just take parts from the other one. So it works, it works in a great way, you know, um, and for 300 bucks, sub 300, I mean, I actually got this for cheaper than that because I bought the slide and the um, frame at different times. So I actually got a really good deal. I don't want to keep talking about prices too much because I know YouTube's been getting crazy on that. So YouTube, we're not promoting no sales. I know I'm a little bit late on the um, disclaimer, but we're not promoting any sales of anything. Just let my subscribers know what's out there, the options that are available to them. So yeah, but like I said, man, yeah, you can't go wrong with either or. I feel like at the end of the day, um, whether you get a Gen 3, Gen 4, even a Gen 2, Gen 5, if, Gen 2 if you can even find one, um, you can't go wrong with a Glock, man. That's my personal opinion. But do y'all think that a Gen 3 is still worth carrying in 2024 opposed to all these so-called better um, better options out there? Let me know in the comments, man. I'm going to catch you on the next one. Y'all be safe out there.